All righty. Good evening, everyone. The time is now 7 p.m. Um, welcome to the Red Clay Consolidated School District Regular School Board Meeting for the November 15th, 2020, 2023. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> now we will move on to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's board meeting? Did so moved, you... Kathy Thompson. Second, English one. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Thank you, um, Ms. Wynn. The motion has been properly moved and seconded to approve the agenda as submitted. Is there any discussion? I have an amendment to the agenda. I'd like to request that we change the approval for action item. Sorry, I can't see it. Action item E, based on what we hear today because of there's a presentation today and I wanna have enough time to ask and answer questions, so potential, but not necessarily. Thank you. Is there any other questions or any other points of discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Now we will move on to public comment. The Red Clay School Board appreciates any member of the community who would like to make a public comment. According to board policy 2006, the Red Clay School Board allocates 30 minutes to public commentary. Each person may have up to three minutes to address the board, and this time may not be transferred to or from another speaker. The board generally does not respond directly to a speaker. The board meeting is not an appropriate place um, or forum to raise complaints or concerns about individual employees. Upon request, the superintendent shall provide the speaker with the procedure for submitting such complaints or concerns. The order of the speakers is listed on the screen. As you see your name, please make your way to a seat near the podium, or if you are virtual, unmute when called to respect the time of anyone present tonight. When you speak, please state your name and organization if you are speaking on, it, on its behalf and the topic of your comment. There's a timer on the screen that will turn on when you have one minute left it will turn yellow with 30 seconds left and flash in red when your three minutes are over. I will thank you for your comments and call on the next speaker. Let's begin with Eric Hansen. Mr. Hansen, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, let me talk to you guys. Everyone hear me all right? I can hear you. All right, good deal. So Eric Hansen, I have two kids in public school in red clay right now. And what I want to do is talk a little bit about the importance of charter, but with respect and through the lens of the entire state educational system, if that's okay. Delaware right now, according to the NAEP scores, is somewhere between 48 and uh, 46 in the entire country out of all states. So one of the worst performing. And at the rate we're currently declining, we're going to be number 50 within three years. So 41% of kids in Delaware cannot are not proficient, uh, only 41% are proficient reading and only 31% proficient in math. I think these are really important. Um, Delaware spends about $17,034 per child right now, and we're roughly 48 in the country. Massachusetts spends virtually the same amount of money and they're number one in the country. So it's really not about money, what it is about good management. So I, I think CSW is a rare opportunity to show where you remove the shackles from a school and it really enables the school to perform well. The parents and teachers and the administration have, given, have been given more power and control in CSW. And as a result, CSW is doing really well. Um, and in addition, CSW, because it's a charter school, is treated more like a business than it is um, typically a school. So I, I think as parents of 
folks, students at CSW, I think we really need to be proud of the fact that it's doing so well. But we also have to think about this as an unusual factor in the state that's really failing right now in education. So what I would say is that, you know, we just need to establish, we, we need to challenge ourselves to do better as a state and use, continue to use charter as an example of how to do that. Um, I, so just wanted to let everyone know that I, FYI, Eric Hansen, I'm running for U.S. Senate. And so if anyone wants to talk to me afterwards, collect a card, whatever, happy to do that. But education is the most important thing I'm going to be talking about on my platform. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Our next speaker is Gina Leonard. Ms. Leonard? Ms. Leonard, are you with us? Ms. Leonard? Okay, we are going to move on to the next speaker. We have Ms. Nyadet Cruz. Welcome, Ms. Cruz. Good evening. My name is Naya Cruz. I'm Senior Secretary at Shortledge Academy and also the President of the Red Clay Secretaries Association. I would like to say happy ESP day and to the members of my association, how valuable you are to Red Clay. On behalf of RCSA, I would like to thank you for the thousands of students that have been registered, transported, and fed. The hundreds of new employees that have been onboarded during this new school year and the hundreds of bills and accounts that have been paid. Our CSA looks forward to working with Red Clay Human Resources to develop processes and systems to onboard our new secretaries and clerks to make sure that we have successful careers here at Red Clay. Again, on behalf of the Red Clay Secretaries Association, thank you to all the clerks and secretaries who may be here in person and on Zoom for all that you do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Cruz. Our next speaker is Mr. Greg Wilson. Uh, my name is Greg Wilson. I'm with uh, Friends of AI. We were formed a year ago. And uh, I would just like to share a couple of comments. Um, it was a year ago that we uh, saw for the first time uh, the data on the impact of 20 years of uh, red clay policy. So it was October 19th, 2022. At the board meeting, uh, red clay data revealed that uh, the decisions that were made 20, 15, and 10 years ago have had a deleterious impact on the comprehensive schools. Um, our school in particular went from having roughly 1,400 students in 2009 to roughly 700 in 2021. Board member Adriana Bohm was shocked at what she saw. She said, "I just look at that. I'm quoting her here. I'm shocked, I'm horrified that the ship of AI sank for so many years. And that as a board, we include me included, because I've been on the board a long time, we didn't address this sinking, sinking, sinking. We did nothing, nothing, nothing. That should never happen again at, at Red Clay. A second board member then chimed in, we did do something. We demanded that Conrad only take Red Clay kids. We demanded that Cab take more Red Clay kids. And we did, we demanded charter school take red clay kids. Now think about what Baum said, then think about what the next board member said, because I think that's that, that, that significance got lost in this nearly three hour meeting. One board member was shocked at the collapse and the other wasn't. We demanded, we demanded. We at AI recognize, friends of AI recognize that we can't demand, we're just asking. We're asking that AI be given a fair chance and the other comprehensive schools. AI right now has 42% of its kids, they're low income. McCain's got 40% low income. Those schools qualify for Title I funding, but I understand things are complicated and they're probably not gonna get that Title I designation, but we're asking that the board at least review once every 10 years, the attendance zones for the schools. AI's attendance zone is 500 students less than Dickinson. 700 less than McCain. Think about that. 
the schools that we all admire growing up, the schools that we grew up, the, school, the schools that are prominent today, the comprehensive schools that serve all the kids, there's an un, unequal playing field right now. And we want to see our school do as best as it can, given the circumstances. Friends of AI, we're supporting the kids with uh, fundraisers. We're uh, uh, supporting them with uh, uh, support for them to do well academically and behavioral. <clears throat> and we want them to be uh, supported by the district. And uh, to paraphrase Council Baum, we want you to do something. And we hope that you can review the uh, attendance zones. And uh, we ask that you uh, take that into consideration when you make your decision moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Our next speaker. And I was just informed that Ms. Leonard um, is uh, here in the room. Ms. Jana Leonard, if you are able to approach the podium. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Uh, as you said, I'm Jana Leonard, the parent of a second grader and a fifth grader at Lewis Elementary. I've also had the privilege of getting to know Lewis students by volunteering there, and I am invested in the education and well-being of every Lewis student. At Lewis, our family has found a special group of teachers, staff, and families who seek to do right by and serve the students in our community. Thus, I cannot overstate Ms. my- Ms. Leonard, if you please just speak into the microphone, that way we can hear you. Sure. Thank you. Thus, I cannot overstate my dismay at the many ways in which Red Clay School District cuts these efforts short and continues to fail these students. These ways are too many to go into detail here, but one only need to look at the low student proficiency rates unprecedented staff turnover, and dwindling enrollment to get the picture. Tonight, though, I would like to specifically address the dissolution of the language immersion programs in the district, the lack of transparency surrounding this decision, and the district's responsibility to fulfill the promises made to families in the remaining immersion programs. Whatever the reasons for the decision, it should have been made clear and evident to staff and families in the district once made. It is unacceptable that this news comes to families, not directly from the district, but by word of mouth, especially after the choice window has begun. Regardless of its future plans for immersion programs, the district needs to provide other pathways for current immersion students to continue to expand upon their dual language experience. A student who has completed Six years of Spanish immersion with demonstrated proficiency should not be placed in a beginning Spanish class upon entering middle school. Furthermore, the students who have learned English as their second language in the immersion program should be equally equipped for opportunities to attend the district's various magnet programs, such as the Dickinson IB program or Cab Calloway. I toured Cab Calloway yesterday with my fifth grader and the staff there were admittedly caught off guard by our inquiries about language classes for students coming from an immersion program. Some of the staff had never even heard of Lewis. Special programs like Cab Calloway have remained out of reach for most Lewis students. And this demonstrates yet another way in which the district has not served them equitably. When I first moved into the neighborhood in which Lewis is located, a neighbor told me that nobody here sends their kids to public school. I felt then, and I feel now even more, indignant and aggrieved by that comment. The nearly 400 students who attend Lewis are most certainly not nobody. I asked Greg Clay to stop feeding into that narrative through its neglect and instead disrupt it You only get three minutes, but we'll follow up with you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Leonard. If you don't mind, could you leave your comments with the table and a contact number and we'll follow up with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Lauren Chrisser. We have her on Zoom. Ms. Chrisser, welcome. Thank you. Have, Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Thank you. My name is Lauren Christ. I'm um, with Friends of AI. 
In regard to the agenda tonight, I just wanted to comment that I see the value in rezoning um, of attendance zones within the district to promote diversity in a more inclusive environment, which will work better for both students and families in the community. Um, whether intentionally or unintentionally, upper class families that can afford to are moving to private or charter schools. Each school SEEP data as listed on the Department of Education um, shows the percentage of schools with low income families. Um, this is formally uh, the free and reduced lunch programs. <laughs> They show clearly the schools in red clay that would benefit from more um, access, accessibility to, the, to good schools. Um, accessibility to great schools is so important. And I know firsthand how amazing the teachers and staff are within red clay, as I've been a student in the system and the teacher as well. Accessibility to schools should not be limited to race, socioeconomic status or social capitals by uh, reevaluating attendance zones to consider uh, geographical proximity, enrollment capacity, as well as uh, transportation efficiency, it would naturally create a more balance that would benefit everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chris. Next we have Ms. Donna Urban, welcome. Good evening, Red Clay board members. I'm Donna Urban, and I love coming to work at the Charter School of Wilmington every day. You listen to public comment, read our emails, met our students and staff, reviewed data, and you know our strengths and our weaknesses. And today you're voting on our five-year renewal. The past three years under Dr. Reginald Johnson's leadership has been the most exciting for me since I joined the CSW team in 2001. Our new strategic plan featuring positive charge is gaining momentum as we replace vintage desks and tables with bright light and collaborative learning spaces and enhance our student journeys. We're focusing on the whole child with intentional support mechanisms being provided to elevate our parents, students, and staff. We couldn't have done this without Red Clay's assistant. From the student center to our main office to our maker spaces, Marcin Michalski, Ted Ammon, and Justin Patel have found the resources to upgrade our spaces. Dean Bolden and his team are a pleasure to work with as we split duties, share common spaces, and imagine future campus possibilities. Dr. Brumall is one of the most responsive administrators I've ever met. Over the past year, he's quickly returned emails and calls and visited our campus numerous times to check in and find out how he can support us. Dr. Green welcomes us to the table as we talk about ideas and plans to benefit all of our students. And at our weakest moment, when we lost senior Nolan Whitman in 2022, Red Clay's deployment team stood by us and helped our community heal. We look forward to the next five years and working more directly with you and elevate all students and families in Red Clay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Urban. Our next speaker is uh, Tyra Myrie on Zoom. Welcome, Ms. Myrie. Not on Zoom. We're going to move to our next speaker, Mr. Stephen Fackenthal. Good evening, board. My name is Stephen Fackenthal, music teacher at Richie Elementary and president of the Red Clay Education Association. Happy American Education Week! In recognition of American Education Week, I'd like to thank our educators, specialists, educational support professionals, administrators, families, and community members in making our public schools the best they can be. From our state organization, the Delaware State Org Association, it takes a team to educate and inspire students to keep schools safe and healthy and to create welcoming learning environments that allow young people to prepare for their future. By working together, teachers, administrators, and education support professionals create the great public schools our students deserve and our nation needs. Thank you to all. While recognizing the many titles and roles that many are that make our public schools possible, we also must continue to talk about the immense pressure and responsibilities that lay on those groups to do this difficult work. It's no cakewalk. We need to be sure we are doing everything possible to alleviate tasks that may be mundane or antiquated. I appreciate Dr. Green acknowledging that aspect during the September uh, board meeting. 
Currently, my leadership team is working on a list of responsibilities of educator plates. The list is getting long. We are hopeful we can work with Dr. Green and the district to take some response to take off some of these responsibilities. Remember, our working conditions are our students' learning conditions. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Fackenthal. Our next speaker is Ms. Kendall Massett. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Kendall Massett. I'm the executive director for the Delaware Charter Schools Network. The network is the only charter school advocacy and support organization in Delaware. And this school year, we have 18,455 students across 23 charter public schools in our state, including my own two children that are a sophomore and senior at Charter School of Wilmington. In 2014, my husband and I decided to move to the Red Clay School District just for the opportunity for our boys to have a chance in the lottery to go to a school that met their interest in math and science. That's because 28 years ago, the people in your seats decided to embrace charter and choice. So people are moving to this district because of a board that did what we wanted and what you guys are here to do tonight. In 1995, Red Clay was the first and now the only district to embrace Charters and Choice. And for that, as a mom, I thank them and you. As the Charter Advocate, I am here to support the Charter School of Wilmington's renewal application and um, Thank you for being thoughtful partners in this work. Thanks you to uh, Superintendent Green, the work that he does. And I ask you that you continue to allow this great school to be a part of your district and a part of our state. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Massett. So that concludes public comment. At this time, we'll hear from our superintendent, Dr. Green, who will share his superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, President Matthews. Welcome to guests in the audience, those who are joining us online. Uh, before I provide my official report, um, again, Red Clay is proud to advocate, lift, and support student voice. And so we have our student representative here this evening, Mr. Abi Lakakula from the Charter School of Wilmington, who will provide an update. And so for those who are in attendance who aren't familiar with our process. Um, we have student representatives um, as a part of our board and each month we have student representatives join us. And again, this isn't just a matter of uh, promoting student voice, but we, we definitely listen and they're valued members of the leadership without throughout Red Clay. So Abby, the floor is yours. And just to be mindful and fully transparent, he has four exams tomorrow. And so once he gets done with his report, he will be leaving. So Abby, floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Avi Lakakula, and I'm here to represent the student body here at the Charter School of Wilmington. To begin, I wanted to talk about our homecoming week. Um, in the last week of October, we were able to celebrate our school spirit throughout various themes where students dressed up through jerseys, Twin Day, the Color Wars. It was a very fun week, but on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we began with our hallway decorating, where each grade picked a theme and decorated their hallway likewise, competing with each other, and were judged by the teachers. And we ended our Friday school afternoon in our pep rally, where spirits were high and students had a lot of fun. On that same night, we had our Friday Night Lights football game, where students brought that same energy. Though we may have lost, we brought it back to homecoming Saturday evening where 936 students attended, a new high for us. In my time here at Charter, a community and organization I'd like to highlight is FosterWell. FosterWell is led by none other than our fellow PE teacher's wife. It is a community and organization dedicated to helping kids in foster care and the people that take care of them. Recently, in the week of November, our Multiplying Good organization, a service-based and volunteering-based 
place for students to act hosted our annual powder puff tournament. Our powder puff tournament is about boys and girls playing football while the boys cheer them on. The each grade competes with one another for the trophy. And in total, we were able to raise uh, $1,600. In addition to this, our National Honor Society is acting with FosterWell to grant children's wishes during this coming holiday season. Through FosterWell, students are able to grant the wishes of kids snow angels. These snow angels are various items that students and will be able to pay for or grant through the funding of FosterWell. For our recent events, our charter community in our AP Environmental Science classroom took a trip down to um, a waste center where they learn more about the do and, do's and don'ts of recycling. They gain experience on how to recycle, the impact science has on recycling, and we're able to ask questions to officials on how they can help the community. On a similar note, our AP Chemistry classroom after Thanksgiving break is taking a trip down to the University of Delaware and learning more about the chemistry department. There they will spend the day, have lunch, ask people questions on research, chemistry, and the life that UD offers. For our new, if, init, excuse me, new initiatives, the Charter School Wilmington has began using efficiency. Efficiency is a platform known for organization and collaboration. This platform allows us to use our activity periods effectively, empowering students and teachers to promote recreational and educational activities, leaving the logistics to this website. On a similar note, using efficiency, our student and faculty director, Mrs. Boy, and our fellow science teacher, Ms. Olson, have organized a guest speaker series for our students. This guest speaker series runs through January and each month a various career member will come to a classroom online or in person and answer and explain their day-to-day -day life. With this knowledge, students are able to understand how to apply what they learn at CSW to the future. And on a similar note, we would like to emphasize our thankfulness to the Force Fund at CSW. The Force Fund has, personally speaking, changed my learning. When I came into CSW as a freshman, the seating and the tables there, I could see all the scratches. It was very hard. But with the new seats and the new tables, it's made, it's made it so much easier for me as a student to focus on my teacher and not the equipment of my chairs. On a similar note, our student government focusing on student initiative is creating um, a variety of communities with the mental wellness and student unions here. With these 16 student unions and 100 plus clubs here, we wanna emphasize student advocacy, equity, and inclusivity here at Charter. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Excellent job, Avi. And he's he's running before he gets any questions. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> no, thank you again for your presentation. Again, that just elevates student voice. And I think within the last two months, one of the things, um, even within charter, obviously, which is a red clay charter, but our student uh, last month who kind of elevated Dickinson uh, in terms of experiential learning. So it's good to see across all of our schools throughout red clay that students are having an opportunity to not only engage in the classroom, but and other spaces to, to put learning into action. So thank you, sir. Good luck on those tests. I'm sorry, if I may add, I wanted to say thank you to Mr. Pruitt for being so helpful to me in creating my slides and everything. <laughs> and so Mr. Pruitt is the director of secondary schools for Red Clay. So good shout out, Mr. Pruitt. Thank you, sir. Stay hydrated tomorrow, man. <laughs> All right, so on to my report. And again, um, thank you to those who are in attendance. Um, both online as well as virtually. Uh, November has been quite the busy month. And they say when you're having fun, sure, uh, time sure does fly. And so as we heard from a lot of our public commenters, um, this is American Education Week. 
So again, we want to take this opportunity um, to thank all of our amazing teachers, administrators, support staff, and all those uh, through the bus drivers, custodial facility staff um, who contribute to making education a remarkable and experience, not only for our students, but for our community. And again, without with all the challenges, again, when we when we really focus on a lot of the positives and the people who create these positive environments, it, again, this is a week worth celebrating. Um, so to all of our educators, just know that as the superintendent of the district, I am thankful for you. Uh, to all our support staff, know that I'm thankful for you. To all of our paraeducators, to our families and communities, know that as we celebrate and go into this season of Thanksgiving um, and coming off the hills of American Education Week, that we are truly thankful for all the stakeholders that make up Red Clay. We are in the exciting uh, season of choice. And so choice again runs November 6th uh, through January the 10th, 2024. Um, please check our website. Uh, many of our schools outside of the information night that we hosted on the virtual information night where we had over 400 stakeholders join us to learn about the choice process. Um, our traditional um, high schools hosted uh, open house nights last week. Um, highlighting our career technical ed programs. Again, our schools do have these opportunities, so please check the calendar and the website um, for specific open house events for our many schools across Red Clay. Um, and if you have any questions um, regarding the choice process, feel free to call 302-552-3789 or redclayschools.com backslash choice uh, to get that information. We're also, um, as we know, the month of October was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we want to thank all of those staff members um, who support those who are not only um, un dealing with this unfortunate um, health issue, but those who are survivors. Um, and so we were out in force uh, throughout the district and Red Clay joined um, in support for those women, men, and families affected by breast cancer uh, by demonstrating that and wearing pink. Um, so it's just not the National Football League. Um, who, who does it, we, we were in full force throughout Red Clay um, and we'll continue to support those stakeholders and community members who are dealing with this unfortunate situation throughout our community. As one of our public commenters indicated, uh, this is National Education Support Professional Day. And when I first got into education, specifically as administrator, I learned very quickly that the two or three most important people are our secretary administration or uh, front office administrative staff the custodians and our school nutrition workers. They keep us fed, they keep the buildings clean and orderly and functioning well. And then more importantly, if you wanna know anything that's going on, our admin front office secretarial staff, they know everything. So in support and honor for all that our secretaries, classroom aides, uh, school nutrition cafeteria staff do, maintenance workers, bus drivers, and others that help to do their part in making red clay great for every child every day, um, we just want to say thank you, and we appreciate all you do. And again, take the opportunity and time again to just acknowledge those who routinely are behind the scenes doing the heavy lifting day in and day out. Uh, please know that we see you, we appreciate you, and we celebrate you. As we've shared with the board, um, we, we are solidifying and strengthening our relationship as a district with Goldie Beacom College. Uh, Goldie Beacom has adopted Skyline Middle um, through its AVID program. And they most recently celebrated the second annual Kindness Day at Skyline Middle School. More than 125 students from Goldie Beacom attended. And if you can get a college student up early in the morning um, to come and do volunteerism, you're doing something right. And so we want to thank Goldie Beacom um, College, their admin and their support, um, and also our Skyline staff and our Skyline scholars who look forward and, and flourish in that partnership. Um, they created, uh, you know, lunches for the Sunday breakfast mission. So this was a service project. So this just wasn't, you know, fun and games. Um, they, again, created those uh, lunches for the Sunday breakfast mission. They also created candy bags that were created for children at AI, uh, the Nemours Children's Hospital. So, again, thank you to that partnership for uh, with Goldie Beacom and Skyline. And as we've shared with the, with the board and the community, um, that partnership does extend well beyond um, Skyline, we have uh, the Early College Academy program that we're launching um, where students can go through that process and earn a sophomore uh, diploma of distinction. And we're seeing a lot of good traction coming out of that for AI um, and McCain High School, um, who will be partnering with Goldie Beacon for their Early College Academy program. So 
more uh, for that, stay tuned. Winter sports are officially underway um, and fall sports have ended. And so we had a lot of uh, highlights um, from coaching to our student athletes. Uh, being a former student athlete, I, I just want to acknowledge the, the dedication, commitment that it takes to be a student athlete, um, working hard, not only academically, but ob obviously um, studying, training, all that goes in. They, they do make a lot of sacrifices. Um, and so we appreciate student athletes and we also appreciate the men, women, coaches, support staff from our athletic directors who give her their time, their energy, talents and efforts uh, to pour in our student athletes. Um, I do have a long list of um, accomplishments and, and I, I'm going to actually save that. And we will acknowledge um, from all of our high schools, those students that received all conference state honors recognition um, but we've had several coaches um, receive coaching of the year um, in particular. And uh, Coach M, the boys soccer coach over at Conrad, is the Diamond State Athletic Conference uh, soccer coach of the year. Uh, Mr. DeStefano, who is the coach over at um, the John Dickinson School, also received uh, uh, coaching honors. And again, we, we have a long list, so we will promote all of those who have those honors and those honorees on our website, again, to celebrate our student athletes, um, because it truly is a long list. And what you learn through sports and through athletics are lifelong lessons. And again, I'm sitting here before you today as a result of coaches, uh, folks that poured into me, but more importantly, my teammates. And it's not always about wins and losses. It's about the lessons that you learn. Um, in particular, I want to give a shout out to AI, a high school, because this time last year, we were trying to figure out how to rebuild the football program and they finished the full season with varsity football this year. So thank you again to the AI community uh, for rebounding and to those student athletes who stuck through it. Um, Cause I can personally sit here and tell you my high school, we won four games in four years and one year we were defeated. You'll get that joke when you're driving home. It wasn't about wins and losses. And again, and so thank you to those student athletes and to those coaches at AI. Um, and also want to give a shout out to Charter as they head into playoff football. Um, best of luck to, to, to Charter football team, as well as Delaware's military DMA, who is also heading into um, playoff football and all of our other respective sports, again, as our student athletes move forward. Um, this month is Native American Heritage Month. Um, and so for all of those, uh, join us in celebrating the culture and heritage of those remarkable Americans who deeply enrich the quality and character of our nation. Again, so we honor those um, throughout our com community um, and recognizing and celebrating Native um, American Heritage Month. And also uh, we, we had a, a, a day off last Friday. And I think it, it goes without saying that folks sacrificed not only for us to have a day off, but we need to honor the men, women, and all those who served on a daily basis. So thank you to all the veterans among us and those who have uh, served. Uh, let us remember, again, their sacrifices and contributions to our country uh, with respect and appreciation because we truly sit here today as a result of the Cephalus Act that they do um, on our behalf. We had a celebrity, a celebrity spotting uh, in Red Clay, um, Ms. Soledad O'Brien, who is a national journalist and TV personality. Uh, we had the privilege of hosting her, um, this renowned journalist at Conrad Schools of Science as a part of her upcoming documentary. Uh, more to come on that and it's slated to premiere on a major network sometime this fall. Um, but again, I think again, looking at the, the, the diversity throughout our district and the opportunities to showcase not only our school, school district, but more importantly, our amazing scholars. So please stay tuned uh, for more to come with regards to this documentary uh, that will premiere on a major network. Our Office of Teaching and Learning uh, continues to do great work as it relates to uh, building a strong foundation around literacy. Um, so the uh, phonemic awareness blending, uh, diverse classroom libraries around math expressions, uh, the work that we're doing with the 95% group. Um, so we've had some walkthroughs throughout many of our schools. Um, and these are just a few photos, again, highlighting a lot of the work that's going on with our te teaching and learning department, school operations, our special services department, and our building admin. Um, every month, our teaching and learning department engages in instructional walkthroughs with the goal of coaching our administrators 
in areas to focus their schools and their leadership. Uh, these discussions and feedback provide our leaders with the knowledge, the skills, and the mindsets to provide student access uh, to grade, uh, a grade level appropriate assignments, um, strong instruction and that will ensure that students are able to accelerate their learning, especially coming off the heels of COVID. We know that uh, learning loss continues to get promoted in terms of what all of our students um, have suffered through. And one of the things that we did during COVID um, as, a, as a teaching and learning department, district level leadership and admin is we, we really looked at Katrina and Hurricane Katrina and the, the disruption that that caused to a system. And one of the things in learning through Katrina was that remediation isn't going to get us to where we wanna go. And it, it's really about learning acceleration, maintaining high expectations. Um, and so we're seeing great things happening with the uh, phonics work that we're doing. Um, we're actually showcasing um, some of that work tomorrow at Lewis, where we'll have the governor join us as long as panel discussions, um, because Lewis is one of the bright examples of, of staff doing that quality work. Um, so more to come, and we will share that information as well, but we're excited again uh, for our teaching and learning department who are engaging with amazing educators, ensuring that they have the resources and support they need to be able to pour into our students. Just a general update on, uh, we're continuing to move forward um, with strategic planning. Um, our departments, um, supervisors, school buildings are continuing to work. We're really looking at priorities. Um, and some of those priorities, again, were shared last month, really looking at student success, uh, student growth and equitable outcomes, really being more outcome driven and outcome oriented. Um, again, toward those equitable outcomes, really detailing some of those what we call KPIs, key performance indicators, to really look at how we're gonna measure every aspect of what we do as an organization. It's one thing to say we're doing it, but we need to be more intentional, again, about measuring and really looking at those outcomes. You can't do all things well, and so we're gonna figure out what we can uh, dig, deep, deep, dig deep on, continue to look at those key performances, uh, indicators, measurable outcomes to support students, and again, that's around early literacy, really looking at our career and technical ed programming. Um, one of my goals since coming in is we have a lot of career pathways, but we also have students who are graduating without certifications in those pathways. Really make them marketable. So really digging deep to figure out once they graduate in the early college academy and the reboot of that is one of those examples. So those students would be able to complete that pathway with 30 college credits. And so what would that mean for a student who's in one of our culinary programs? What type beyond um, OSHA or, or, or Serve Safe certification are they actually receiving to make themselves marketable and what's going to set them aside in this labor market? And again, as we share with the board, a lot of that is um, steeped in our labor market analysis and some of the things that we did as a part of um, this process. And then really looking at, again, systems of support and intervention, really looking at family, community engagement, and strategic partnerships. How do we really look at collective impact and this work around shared vision, shared mission, shared outcomes, where not only our educators and schools, but those support agencies, communities that we serve and really looking at better alignment as it relates to that. And then resources and operations. Again, as you'll hear, we're, we're heading out to referendum. And if you haven't heard, you're hearing it here now, um, we will be going out to referendum. So please know that if you live in red clay, if you have a child, grandchildren, family members learning in red clay, or if you work in red clay, we will compel you to be, be a yes vote, but really looking at those resources and operations. We have 2.8 million square feet of building and facility space. We are the largest comprehensive, most diverse school district in the state of Delaware. And so when we talk about resources and operations, um, we will continue to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars, however, we need or require resources to continue to expand the great opportunities that we have. So really looking at continuous improvement to maximize our uh, workforce, uh, really looking at retention models. As again, we heard some of those public commenters around how do we retain the staff because the best recruitment strategy is retaining the current staff that we have. So more to come again, and I know the board set the goal and real finding the point, um, really looking at just highlighting some high level things is real looking at school safety and wellness. Again, if you're not, safe and you don't feel secure, it's difficult to learn. So that will be, again, one of the many pillars um, within our uh, strategic plan. 
and I did skip over National Literacy Month, but that was a part of, again, what I'm sharing tomorrow and tomorrow at Lewis that highlights that work. And referendum I shared, so we'll have two ballot questions and you'll see that coming up as your vote for the board. The Wilmington Learning Collaborative, the meeting um, was pushed back. That meeting will be held on November 28th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at Pulaski Early Education Center, Christina School District. And there is a virtual link uh, because that meeting will be a hybrid meeting. That concludes my report. Happy to entertain any questions from the board members before we move on. Thank you, Dr. Green. Do we have any questions or points for discussion? Hearing none, we will move on to presentations. At this time, we will entertain presentations. And I believe the first one we have is Board Policy and Review 6005 um, with Mr. Dr. Brumall. Good evening. Can you speak to the mic, Dr. Brumont? Thank you, sir. Good evening. Here to present a draft of a revised policy of 6005, give a brief summary of our November 1st board policy meeting, and outline the next steps that we have forthcoming. On November 1st, the committee met. Um, we had an approval of the minutes. We had a discussion of policy 4004, which is the drug and alcohol policy. We reviewed the revisions that were recommended by district council. We also made a motion and agreed to move this forward for a second reading and action by the board. We also looked at a new policy that we presented last uh, month. It's our sexual, adult sexual misconduct 4022. That's a policy that was required by the state this year by Senate Bill 291. It was drafted after a model policy that was provided by the state of Delaware. We did review and agreed to move that one forward for a second reading this evening as well. We also had discussion on 5013 and its own review policy. That was up for a first reading two months ago and was delayed for a second review by the committee. We added a scope of attendance zone review that would be approved by the board when they did go out to an attendance zone review. We removed all references to demographics from the advisement of our district council and was added a minimum of a 10 year review. That also received a positive vote to bring forward for a second reading. We had discussion of all policies in 6001 and 6005. 6005 resulted in a change by adding a sentence that direct claims in accordance with the Delaware budget and accounting manual. That is just a process that's currently utilized by the state of Delaware and it needed to be added to our policy. Our next steps for 6005 is it'll be draft posted tomorrow morning. Um, Peterty has the ability to provide public comment. We did have the board policy review committee meet and discuss this. So I encourage any public comment on this. They can email me at district office or give me a phone call. Um, 6005 will be a second reading coming up next month. Thank you. Do we have any questions or any points of discussion from the board? Hearing none, thank you, Dr. Brumall. Our next presentation is the Energy Saving Company Project by Dr. Ammon. Good evening. It was about 10 years ago that our board voted to um, take on the first ESCO project in the state of Delaware. I think there were only two of you that were here back then 10 years ago. But that project, at this point in the project, was um, planned to have saved about $8 million. And we're currently at about $9.1 million of savings. Uh, through that project. So certainly it has been a very successful project. Tonight, you have an opportunity to vote on what we've been calling ESCO 2, which is just the, the next step of our, of our project related to energy savings. And this one involves taking advantage of some DSCU, the Delaware Sustainable Energy Utility um, grant monies, and to install solar array installations throughout our district in about eight or nine different buildings. Um, LED lighting upgrades. We heard one of our students talk earlier about the importance of facilities um, in student learning, in improving some indoor air quality and also some HVAC upgrades. So your action item tonight is to take advantage of the state municipal lease to fund these improvements. And then we have a guarantee through um, our, our vendor and with the DSEU and OMB that the savings of this project will be more than enough to pay for the, the payments for that equipment. So the action item allows um, Durrell to sign the, the closing documents on your behalf for $13 million, which will be paid back over the next 20 years. 
if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Any questions, points of discussion? Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Ammon. Next, we have the charter school renewal presentation. Welcome. Great, thank, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, my name is Dan Freeman and I have the honor of serving as the chair for the Charter School Wilmington Board. And on behalf of the board, I'd like to start by just saying thank you for the time uh, and thank you for your consideration of our renewal application. Uh, and, and certainly thank you to the Red Clay Board for your service. Uh, I think all of our board members know firsthand how challenging, frustrating, and time-consuming uh, board service can be, but we also know how critical your work is to positioning all of the educators in Red Clay to have a transformative impact on their students and really fill them with hope and optimism and position them to take advantage of the limits limitless opportunities that a great education provides. And it's really in the spirit of hope and optimism that I'd like to introduce Dr. Reggie Johnson, who's been the leader of the Charter School of Wilmington for going on three years. And he's really brought great leadership, compassion, and intellectual humility, and really has the school positioned uh, very well for, for future success. Dr. Johnson. Thank you, Dan, and good evening, everyone. Um, and I'd like to echo Dr. Freeman's words and thanking the Red Clay School Board and continue our appreciation. First, to the Renewal Committee. Uh, we know that it took a significant amount of time to review as well as provide feedback to us, and we appreciate that feedback, and we look forward to continuous improvement as well as working together with you uh, in support of our students and families. Second, uh, to the Cab Calloway community. It has been an honor to work with the Dean of Cab, as well as the faculty and staff. And we are looking forward to continuing the opportunity to partner and co-lead for an exceptional experience for both schools. It is a unique model. And although there are some challenges in terms of um, being in a building together, but I think we have consistently looked at how we can better serve both of our student populations. Uh, lastly, to the Red Clay School District. Um, one of the things that happened this week, Dr. Hugh Brumall attended uh, one of our parent coffee teas this week, and it was just a powerful representation of this partnership. And so I would like to thank Superintendent Green and his team for the way they have embraced me, as well as looking towards the future of the Charter School of Wilmington and hopefully the next five years. So I do wanna highlight one area that we've been super focused on and that is cultivating an innovative culture. And this started roughly about two years ago with the first phase of this work, looking at an innovative school culture and what that means for a school leader. And so we partner with Horn Entrepreneurship at the University of Delaware, and we are so proud of that partnership and feel really grateful to have had the experiences with the Horn Entrepreneurship Program. And so we have completed the first phase, and that was really a school leader community of practice. The second phase of this work happened last school year, where the school leadership team really looked at an entire year and thinking about how do we build an innovative school culture. Phase three of this work is around accelerating innovation in the classroom. So starting in December, our faculty and staff will engage in another partnership with Horn Entrepreneurship Program at the University of Delaware to really think about what does this now mean for classrooms? Uh, one of the things that we wanna do is really share some of our learnings with all of Red Clay schools. Um, and I think that is the hope and the meaning behind this partnership is to share not only our resources within the building, but also um, intellectual capital. And so I'm actually looking for a phase four program with Horn Entrepreneurship. So if you guys can think of something, just let me know because we want to continue that partnership with them. So thank you. And I'd like to pass it back over to Dr. Freeman. 
Great. And if we could go to the next slide. One of the things that we've been really focused on as a byproduct of the last renewal process is making sure that we have our governance house in order. And so we've really made a concerted effort to make sure that we're following all of the, the, the statutory requirements, but even more so the best practices to be a highly effective board. And just to wrap things up, I, I just wanna once again reiterate our gratitude. Um, we're extremely grateful to the partnership uh, with Red Clay and again, Nothing but gratitude to you as as public service servants for the work that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any questions or any uh, I discussion? Do. Okay, I wanted to say something, uh, Dr. Freeman and Dr. Johnson. I have to thank you. I've seen I've been involved with the charter school community in a variety of roles. One that, long time ago as a parent, now as a Red Clay board member, and I have to thank the charter school because. You're a gem within Red Clay, at least in my opinion. You're a very important part of Red Clay. And I really appreciate the fact that when we have issues, you address them. I appreciate the fact that in the accountability report, there are no issues this time. There have been in the past, and you've you've changed that. And I, I really appreciate that because charter school is a gem, but we have an, an uh, we obviously have a, an authorization responsibility, which I think the board takes very seriously. But I greatly appreciate your willingness to work with us to, I think, improve charter school, but clearly to make it, you know, uh, author, authorizable within Red Clay. So thank you for all you've done. Thank, thank you very much, Kathy. Appreciate it. Any other questions or points of discussion? Well, great. I do. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I have a Dr. lot of Smith. questions and comments. So I'll go right ahead. Please bear with me. Um, I do take my role as a board member very seriously. And as an edu a lifelong educator and advocate of children, um, I have quite a bit of quite a bit to say. So hopefully you'll bear with me. Um of course. First and foremost, I'd like to say that my daughter graduated with honors from the Charter School of Wilmington, and she had the opportunity to learn there. And she is now in her third year of college as an engineering student. Uh, and a lot of times she says, Mom, I'm tired of school. She says, but at least Charter School of Wilmington prepared me for what I deem in her school as a little bit of antiquated practices uh, in, in higher ed, in terms of weed out practices and those kinds of things, which she has um, definitely achieved above and beyond that. But so I do want to recognize that my child is a product of Charter School of Wilmington's education. So I certainly um, like to thank all of the teachers who work hard because as an educator, I know that teachers work hard no matter what schools they work in. And I know that they face different challenges. Um, there was a few particular teachers and um, former administrators that were very uh, instrumental in supporting her as a black gay young lady. And I, I say that because I think it's important for what I'm going to, to ask questions about. Um, so again, it's American Education Week, and thank you to all this Charter School Wilmington staff. Anything that I question or have concerns about is not personal. It is not an agenda against charters or Charter School of Wilmington, but these are some issues that I'd like to bring up. The demographics have not changed considerably for the Charter School of Wilmington. One of my first school board meetings was several years ago when this issue came up with, with regard to the racial demographics of students entering into the Charter School of Wilmington. Right now, there is still fewer than 10% of the students who are black in the school. And that's concerning to me because we have way more than 10% of students who are black and red clay. Who does Charter School of Wilmington benefit? Uh, I think it benefits the students who are at the top tier of their ability to perform. And that's who it benefits. Who does not benefit from them all being selected the students in red clay, 
because we know as educators, students who are surrounded by other peers who have a higher uh, level of maybe not ability, but you know, engagement in their schools benefit from those. So when we take this is a this is not a charter school Wilmington issue. This is any kind of magnet program. And I'll disclaimer: my son goes to a magnet claim a magnet school. So this is an issue that I grapple with because you know I'm part of this system and I'm trying to figure out a way to do better. If that makes sense. So that's a that's a concern to me. Um, as an educator, it's a concern that the the entry criteria for admissions gives preference to employees of CSW who may or may not be part of Red Clay. I'm sure many of them are. And then to siblings and lastly to students within Red Clay. I'm not sure that there's been a lot of effort to recruit students of color from uh, less well-to-do families and to help them understand that they have opportunities in the science and tech, the STEM, STEAM field. We know that there's a shortage of people who are of color, of particularly black and Latino, who are in those fields, who are in the schools teaching in the higher ed. It doesn't, they're not there. So it seems biased towards one, the top students who tend to have more economic capital and social capital to be able to navigate the system of red clay of Delaware to get their child into CSW. Again, my child's benefit as well. But I'm speaking on behalf of those who are not like me. And so I believe that if we are going to have a true collaboration for the betterment of all of our students in this in the red clay area school district surrounding areas, then we need to do a better job of ensuring that we get rid of the inequities and the biases that prevent students who do not look like me, live in the same type of house, live in the same neighborhoods, um, so that they can have those opportunities. That has not been a priority of, of Charter School of Wilmington. We say it has been, but it hasn't resulted in that. The the reason why I have so much to say today also is because usually we have a chance to talk. We get, this was put on the agenda this today as the presentation and now we're supposed to vote on it. And I just don't think that's fair. Um, and I don't know, I'm not trying to blame any one particular person, but I believe that this conversation should have had been last month. Um, I understand there's a deadline of, of November 30th to approve the charter, but I would be remiss if I wasn't very explicit in how I feel. The state, the test that, that's used, the Terra Nova test for entry is a one-time shot, snapshot of students' ability. And it's a high stakes test because how they score on that test determines if they get into CSW or on a waiting list. And I'm not really sure that the past practices, and I'm not speaking about the current administration or the current practices, because I'm, I'm not sure. But I'm not sure that the past practices, or maybe the current, are truly using the lottery system that is making sure that all students have equal opportunity to be a part of CSW. I saw in some of the, the documents that I requested, there are some highlights with some great pictures of students. And I'm just going to bring to light, because some of you may not be aware, but I think that this may be, this book, if we don't talk about history, the thing, it continues. I saw the lovely mural that's on the Latin American Community, Community Center that was painted by students from 2021 at CSW. I'm highlighting my daughter again because she embraced all of the heartache and pain and trauma that she experienced at the hands of the board of CSW when she spoke in 2021 and was, was assaulted verbally and racially with the Zoom bombing. I'm not, there were some other issues that they were since resolved um, with staff members, but that hurt and pain and trauma did not go away when she left CSW. And it was at the hands of the adults 
in our systems that failed her in that moment. And so we spoke about in the recent past years of students who have some mental health challenges, who have thoughts of suicide, who have depression and anxiety. Those things are all a result of how they experience life as well as maybe some genetic or other issues. CSW has a lot to do with that stress. Because we had a fabulous student here who just told us that he has four tests tomorrow. Why does he have four tests tomorrow? You know how many parents have to deal with their students who go to CSW who get stressed out because they have four tests in one day? Unacceptable. As an educator, we know better. When you know better, we do better. Maya Angelou. So I expect CSW to look into some of those antiquated practices where teachers are not sharing their schedules and make sure that students don't have to leave something that they could learn a lot from to do four tests in one day. That's not a new practice that's been going on for years. So my question is, why should we with some of these issues that have been continuing, continue to renew the charter when we've had the conversations and nothing has changed in several years with regard to what I said. Have there been wonderful things? Yes. Are the students there wonderful? Yes. Are the teachers there wonderful and the admin? Absolutely. That's not the issue. It's not, the issue is not student achievement. You're taking the top tier of students. If you didn't do that, well, I'd be concerned. But what about those students who don't have parents who advocate on their behalf, who have the social capital and networks, who work at DuPont and University of Delaware to have all of that, to get their students the same opportunities? They're not included in CSW most of the time. And if they are, it's a small percentage. So if we do pass this charter renewal, which for the benefit of the students, I certainly would hope we would. I am going to be very curious to see what happens differently after today, because as an advocate of children and an educator who's done her research, I'm not impressed with that aspect. In general, we've talked a lot as a board about comprehensive schools and we haven't, we're having some challenges. We are a fabulous district, by the way. I have no qualms about that. Red Clay is a fabulous district and we do fabulous things, way above and beyond a lot of our upper, upper echelon neighbors in Pennsylvania, some in Maryland as well. So that's not the issue, but we have an opportunity to be the best district is serving all students, not just those who have connections or resources. So with that being said, I'd like to see some changes with regard to who, how the admissions process goes, because it's not fair. My daughter had straight A's all throughout school, was considered practically gifted, and was on the waiting list, maybe because of the lottery, but then eventually got in because you got to have some black kids in there. And she didn't live in this inner city of Wilmington either. So that's my, my soliloquy, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, I know it came off very strong, but I'm very passionate about students and their opportunities. And so I hope that you take what I say seriously and that things continue to improve. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. And, and just on, on behalf of Charter, we share many of your concerns and we certainly are always open to and appreciate the feedback. Um, and certainly, uh, you know, under Dr. Johnson's leadership and under the, the new strategic plan, we're working toward uh, being better at serving all of the students. Thank you so much. So thank you. All right. Do we have any other questions, comments, or points of discussion? All right. Thank you so much. So we now move on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the executive session held on October 18, 2023?
So moved, Kathy Thompson. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Is there a second? second? Second, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Has been properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the executive session held October 18, 2023. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the regular session held on October 18, 2023? So moved, Kathy Thompson. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Se is there a second? Second, Neesmith. Thank you, Dr. Neesmith. It has been properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes from the regular session held on October 18th, 2023. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the public referendum board workshop held on November 6, 2023? So moved. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Neesmith. Sorry, go ahead, LJ. Dr. Neesmith, thank you so much. Um, is the motion has been properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes um, from the public referendum workshop held on November 6, 2023. Any discussion? I just have a comment. I think that um, Dr. Evan did a fabulous job of sharing the information as well as the rest of the team. And I really appreciate the thorough uh, work that was put into putting that workshop together. Thank you. Any other comments? I will add just for um, the, the public's benefit, um, in addition to the minutes, the, this meeting has been recorded and uh, is available um, on our YouTube page. I would highly encourage those who um, did not attend to attend it. There's a lot of really good informative information there um, so folks can be informed on the upcoming referendum. Any other points of discussion? Excellent, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Now we move to action items for the first action item we need to actually separate these policies um do i have a motion to separate the policies under action item a so moved casper thank you mr casper do i have a second second second, second uh english mm -hmm. win thank you so much the motion's been properly moved and seconded um to separate the board policy votes um, under action item a um, any discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, so action item A, it is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the following policy as submitted, which is policy 4005, the drug and alcohol free workplace. 4004. Oh, excuse me, 4004, I apologize. Mm -hmm. So moved. Kathy Thank Thompson. You. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Do we have a second? second? Second, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Motion's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'd like to amend the motion. I'd like to remove the attendance zone review because I see an issue with how it's written up. That's not a pro point of order. I think we have to hand handle that at a separate time. We now have a motion for you can amend the motion. That's a that's a thing. Amending the motion is a thing. So no, we, but we're, we already we voted on that. This is to adopt four thousand and four. You're talking about fifty thirteen. I think it's the wrong policy reference. Right, right. so it can be done once the way it's to... the way that it's written here is is one recommendation. Oh, they just split we it. Just just right, but we just yeah. split it. We okay. Just split okay. It. So we'll do them one at a time. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yep, absolutely. Any other points of discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Action item A2. A2. <laughs> <laughs> it is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the following board policy, which is 4022, the adult sexual misconduct, as submitted. Do I have a motion? So moved, Kathy Thompson. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Do I have a second? Second, English win. Thank you, Ms. English win. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Action item A3. It is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the following board policy as submitted, which is policy 5013, attendance zone review. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Leonard, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Neesmith. Any discussion? Yes. I have a quite I, I, it's there's an error I guess based on what we talked about and maybe Ms., Mr. Leonard can see it I do not and maybe I'm just missing it so I've, I've been looking I'm like maybe it's my old eyes I don't know um the, we said at least within 10 years a minimum of 10 years right is that correct that's my question yes 
Is that in here? Do I? I don't see that, but maybe I'm missing it. No, that is uh, that there. is what he said. A minimum, right? But, um, but yeah, I should... had a question regarding it being a minimum of ten years. Also, I know in the the board member handbook it says that we could review the policies throughout the year, not necessarily ten years. Um, I I think that the wording can be changed um, so that it's not a minimum of 10 years. Um, if I'm explaining myself properly. So generally speaking, I, and again, if for the edification of the board and the community, the discussion was really to align it around the census. And so that happens every 10 years, but it doesn't preclude the board at any point to review that policy. Right. So in essence, you're just establishing a policy to align with with the vision behind how it was presented. But to the handbook's point, you can I mean, it doesn't require that 10 year window. You can review that policy at any point. So then my next question is, then do we need to put that particular line and put a 10 year attendance zone review? Do we need to put that in if. If we would prefer to conduct or, you know what I mean, conducted according to the census. If that makes sense. And But and also, because it says in the the, the board, hand, board member handbook that we can review it whenever we see fit, is it a requirement that we put in the 10? I think, I think what you're talking about is um, we can review any policy, right. but I guess what my question is more about what's in this policy. Mm, yes. Is is that was the minimum of, of every ten years the sentiment, Mr. Leonard, of what you were trying to, to accomplish when you submitted this? Correct. It, okay. it came out of the uh, AI Dupont High School Task Force, um, where we uh, we haven't reviewed the uh, secondary schools in over twenty two years. So, uh, and align it with the uh, the census, I think, would be great. Okay. And we had that data to do that. And again, uh, this policy is not to change anything. It's just to review yeah. to see if anything needs to be changed. And I know there are some misconceptions out there about what it says. It says review. And we have the data to do that very easily. Uh, I, I think it would behoove us to do all of our schools in at least 10 years to see because there are a lot of movement in northern Delaware as far as the population goes. And it just brought the light with the AI task force and AI Dupont High Schools when this uh, came to light. Thank you. And my last comment is, I do think this is a good idea to 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 put it out there so that we are being cognizant of any potential changes because anybody coming in new may not realize that. Again, this is not to change attendance. I just want to make that clear: It's not to change the attendance zones; it's to review it. But it doesn't say as aligned with the census, and I don't know if that's something we wanted in there, but I'm I'm fine with the way it's written. I have comments if everybody else is done. So I have a problem with this policy. I don't believe it's needed. The board has the ability to review and data anytime it wants. The, the board has the oper has the right to change attendance zones anytime that it wants. We don't need to create a policy to encapsulate the authority that the board already has. So I think it's unnecessary. I have a problem with the way the issue arose. It arose out of one school, and that was the Fix AI Committee. And I know AI wants recommended to the board that we review the AI high school feeder pattern or the comprehensive high school feeder patterns. They didn't talk about every school. And I think it's the every school that I have an issue with. And I hear what Mr. Leonard and Dr. Neesmith says, but the policy itself requires an analysis and a proposal based on the analysis and community input. The committee, the committee shall develop proposals for potential adjustments to the attendance zones. So the policy is designed to change the attendance zones. In Delaware, the law is very clear. We could certainly go to the legislature to change it if we wanted to, but it's very clear that children are to be assigned to the schools closest to their homes without regard to any factor other than geographic distance and natural boundaries. This policy talks about a little bit more than that, and I don't believe that we're able to do it. It is 
less of an issue at the high school level where choice is abundant. It is more problematic at the elementary school levels where there isn't where choice doesn't really exist in the same way at all. And what it would do at the what what the Fix AI committee did not talk about, they were very concerned about the capacity utilization at AI high school, but what they never ever broached was the capacity at other schools. So there are four, four or five schools that have a lower capacity than AI. They never touched on that. Those happen to be elementary and middle schools. And what it would do is move children if they wanted to, do, if they wanted to fill up the schools, which is what the policy is all about, we would be moving children downtown. We've in the past when we've changed feeder, feeder patterns, it's been because there's been a new school or a court order. And because attendance zone changes are very traumatic for the families that involve that are involved. We saw that just several years ago with Cook. When we created the Cook, when we built Cook, we had to change feeder patterns. And that was traumatic for families that were involved. Make no bones about it, people buy homes based on the feeder pattern. That is definitely one of the things they look at is the feeder pattern. And to just willy nilly change it is in my view, really, I, I think it's irresponsible. And I think it's not something we, we should do. I also think this policy is untimely. We have been uh, realigning feeder patterns is not a board or district priority at this time. We agreed as a board this year to focus on three areas. This is not one of the areas, and especially um, it, 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 this is not one of the areas that we agreed to focus on. So I don't believe this is needed. I think we need to maintain vigilance on what we agreed to focus on, and I will not, I can't support this policy. Mr. Lang? Okay, well, i just like to say that uh, you said they, meaning the committee, but you were part of that committee. If you recall, you were on that committee, so it wasn't they, it was we. Uh, and it's, uh, if it would be left it up to the board, uh, we had 22 years without any uh, review and why we would allow a school, one of our schools, to lose 55% of their population and 60% of their feeder pattern kids we went from 1,140 kids in 2009 down to less than 400 in the feeder pattern. That just makes common sense that we have to review this every once in a while. People move around, especially in Newcastle County. So uh, this has gone through two committees, the AI committee and the policy review committee. They passed it. And AI um, task force passed it. And I, I appreciate your personal views on this, but it's already been through committee twice. We started this back in March. Now here we are in uh, November. We're still talking about it because uh, you, you asked us to change some things last month. We did. We took out a lot of things out of the policy, and we also put in the, the time frame. So we, I thought we had that taken care of with all the things you asked for. We did do that. And uh, you know, if you don't want to vote for it, that's great. But uh, it has been through committee, and uh, you know, it's the committee rules, not one person. Right, just like the board the, the board rules, not just one person. But I don't believe we make a policy based on a situation at one school. We have twenty eight schools, not one. The focal the focus focal point cannot be on one school. I have one last comment. Um, I was not in support at the beginning of AI. So my vote on this, I'm sorry, the AI committee, because I did not vote for the AI committee. I don't have anything against the decision of the board. Um, so my, in, my interest in this has nothing to do with AI or any other school in particular. I just think it's good practice to, to put into to place a policy that will help you make sure you do a better job as a board member. And some of our responsibilities is to review pol ongoing policies. So even though it's not, as you said, and I agree, the priority of the of the, the district this year, the main jobs of us as board members is to create and review policies along with hiring the superintendent and ensuring that our students have a viable a guaranteed curriculum and program. So, uh, but one to your point, I think there may be a couple of words that could be added in here because I do see what you're saying under section four, where it says attendance zone review process. It talks about frequency A, formation of review committee B, and go down a little bit more where it says proposal development. 
you don't necessarily need to make a proposal at this point. So maybe I would say based on analysis um, shall develop potential a, pot a proposals for potential adjustments and that's just potential. But I think as you go down, there may be a word or two missing that says if it if there is a proposed attendance zone adjustment, then the stakeholders will review and then the decision making and then implementation. Because you're not going to implement implement an attendance zone adjustment if there was no need to do so. So well, oh, that, but that also, was it. sorry. To yes, go ahead. It it would have to come before the board anyway, and the board would have Correct. to vote. To determine if we were going to implement any any True. any sort of changes and under areas of responsibility, um, standards of governance under one A, the board is required to you know review and update policies throughout the year anyway. Um, I okay, so as an AI, I am an AI high school alumnus. Um, I did not join the board policy committee because of that. I joined the board policy committee because I'm a lover of policy um, as I work for city government and have worked for in state government. Um, I have noticed um, in uh, 5013 under, I guess, number four of the attended zone review process on um, the proposal development. Um, as a mother of a small child, um, I understand where um Kathy is coming from regarding um how traumatic it can be and how we do select you know homes based on feeder patterns for for our families because I selected where I live for for my son you know so that he could go to one of the closest schools to him because it was the best school for him so I I completely understand that um however I do agree with aligning, um, you know, if if the census says that every 10 years we will review, then I don't see anything wrong with aligning this policy with the census. Um, I do think that uh, we could stand to have further discussion and maybe update some of the verbiage like regarding the proposal um, in the section of the attended zone um, policy. But aside from that, um, that, that's all I have. Thank you. Any other points of discussion, questions, comments? All righty. Um, I am actually going, due to the debate and discussion, I'm going to ask for a roll call vote, please. Mr. Casper? No. Miss English Wynn? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Dr. Neesmith? Yes. Ms. Thompson? No. Mr. Wilson? No. Mr. Matthews? No. That is three yes and four no. The motion fails. Thank you. Moving on. Action item B. It is a recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education hold a special election on Wednesday, February 28th to bring before the voters a current expense operating tax increase of 30 cents per $100 of assessed value of all taxable real estate, approximately 16.3 million in the 2024, 2025 school year, an additional 10 cent per 100,000, approximately 5.5 million for the 2025 school year and an additional 10 per 100, 100 assessed value, approximately 5.5 for the 2026, 2027 school year for the net increase uh, 50 cents per $100 assessed value, approximately 27.3 million. Tax increase will be used to fund operating expenses, salaries, benefits, energy costs, new curriculum supplies, curriculum initiatives, including the continuation of extracurricular programs, school interventions, safety and security efforts for schools and buses, and efforts to meet the district strategic plan. So moved, Kathy Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Second, Thompson. Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. The motion has been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Action item C, pursuant to the certificate of necessity, number 2,508, A through Y, the Delaware Department of, the Delaware Department of Education of the state of Delaware certifies that it has determined that there is a present necessity 
for a school construction program in the Red Clay Consolidated School District, and that that total cost of construction programs as estimated by the Department of Education is 300, and this is a big number, $320,516,612, and that the state share, therefore, is 192 million. 309,961 and the share to be borne by such district is 128,206,651. It is a recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education hold a special bond election on Wednesday, February 28th, 2024 for the purpose of bringing before the voters an amount of local bond debt of 128,206,651 for the school construction program renovate to renovate Brandywine Springs, Baltz, Forest Oak, Heritage, Johnson, Dr. Johnson Elementary, Lewis, Linden Hill, Marlbrook, Moat, North Star, Richardson Park, Ritchie, Shortledge, and Warner Elementary Schools, A.I. DuPont, Conrad, H.B. DuPont, Skyline, Stanton Middle Schools, A.I. DuPont High School, Cap Calloway School of the Arts, the John Dickinson School, and McCain High Schools, and the Meadowood and Meadowood Annex to determine if the voters are for such a bond issue. Is there a motion? Another mouthful. So moved, Kathy Thompson. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Is there a second? Mr. Wilson, Thank second. You. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, and I probably should have said something last time, Mr. Uh, Matthews, but I fully support both of these referenda. For the current expense, we haven't gone to referendum in over nine years, and everything has gone up, including the price of our children's education. It's really necessary. As Dr. Green pointed out, we have some... I forget what the number is, but like 302.8 million square feet in 28 buildings. And we haven't gone to referendum in since uh, 2012 for a capital referendum. It is absolutely needed for us to maintain our buildings because as Mr. Fackenthal always points out, our children's learning, ex I forget what he says, our children's learning environment is our teachers, our teachers <laughs> working environment is our children's learning environment. Yes, he's absolutely right about that. So it's really critical for our children that we put them in safe, secure buildings that are well-maintained. So I fully support both. Any other comments? Yes, I'd like to say that uh, this has been a long time coming and there's a lot of hands involved. Uh, one good saying I always hear, many hands make light work. And I tell you all the way from Dover, Delaware, to hear this is all we've been hearing for the last 10 over 10 years now so as we move forward we can see you know benefiting not just the buildings but even the administrators the money that we're going to be able to pay everybody that's in red clay to boost them up as being the number one district in the state i feel that it's been a long time coming and we will all benefit from this any other points of discussion? Very brief. Um, I echo the sentiments of other board members. And also, I think a lot of times we don't think forward over time. It, it ends up catching up with us, right? Yeah. So that's been the sentiment of lots of school districts that have been in different states and things where they've saved money and they didn't raise taxes in some other states and stuff. And now they're at a deficit, right? So I, I really implore all of our our citizens to and our constituents to really look into all of the information that the district puts out to be well informed about the referendum and share that information uh, with your friends and neighbors. Thank you. Any other points of discussion? Any other comments? Hearing none, all, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Action item D. It is a recommendation that the Red Clay uh, Board of Education authorize the superintendent to approve the execution and delivery of an equipment lease purchase agreement described in the attached document. This project, this project, excuse me, will leverage state and federal funding and credits along with a lease up to 14 million with the approval of the Delaware Sustainable Energy Utility and the Office of Management and Budget using the State of Delaware Master Lease Agreement. Do I have a motion? So move, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Do I have a second? Second. Neesmith. Oh. Second. Dr. Neesmith. Um, the motion's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Action item E, it is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve, approve the request for a five-year renewal of the Charter School of Wilmington as submitted. So moved, Kathy Thompson. Second, Mr. Wilson. Is this motion has been properly moved and second. Is there any discussion? I'm going to uh, recuse myself from this vote. Thank you. You should ask for discussion. I have a question. Um, and, and I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Johnson for a question. Uh, I took notes on what you were saying, and thank you for your presentation. Um, you said that there was you're continuing the part with the partnership with CAB, um, and and I know that students at, at CAB can take CSW classes, and there's the same they're on the same sports team, which I think builds a lot of community within the building. You mentioned some challenges, but you know in the being in the building together. Is there anything, like, can you elaborate on that a little bit? And then maybe that's something that we can continue to work on as, as a team. Nothing that is um, challenging that we, we're not overcoming, but it's just, again, just having a school within a school, that's just challenging in and of itself, but nothing in particular. Because I remember when I would come in, I'm, I'm, I like that we have that secure entrance, but then it was like, I'm just like, I got to go all the way down the hall, up the steps and, you know, all that. And there's kids all over the place. So I just was wondering um, if that's something, especially since we're going for referendum, if there's any other improvements. So. Oh, yes, we are actually working with uh, Dr. Brumall on that specific issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none. Um, in light of the recusal, uh, Ms. Jefferson, if we could please have a roll call vote. Mr. Casper? He's recused. Sir. Ms. English Wynn? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Dr. Neesmith? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Six yes, one recusal. Motion passed. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> It is a uh, action item F. It is a recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the 2022 through 2024 legislative priorities as submitted. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Do I have a second? Second, second. English Win. Ms. English Win. Um, thank you. The motion has been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Action item G, it is a recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve a donation in the amount of $3,000 from Just Mentoring, a nonprofit organization to pay for mentors at the following Red Clay schools, AI Middle, Stanton Middle, the John Dickinson School, Cab Calloway School of the Arts, Thomas McCain High School, and AI DuPont High School. Is there a motion to approve the recommendations? So moved. Second, thank Neesmith. Mr. And thank you, Dr. Neesmith. The motion has been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Just a huge thank you to Ms. Mrs. Leonard for the donation. It will be well used, I'm sure. Yes, thank you so much for your generosity. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So now we move on to consent action items. Um, before we begin, is there anything that needs to be removed from consent items before we proceed? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved, Kathy Thompson. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Is there a second? second? Second, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. It has been properly moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, we move on to school board committee reports. First up, we have board policy review committee. Do we have a report? Board policy. Um, yeah. Yes, I had I submitted a report in, in board docs. I don't want to sound like a tape recorder for Dr. Brumwell's uh, presentation that he provided. Um, so our reports are similar. The only thing that I did not have was policy number 6005, which is the policy development process that he had listed on his report. Otherwise, they're the same. Thank you. Thank you. 
um, for CFRC Community Financial Review Committee. Do we have a report? Yes, and the written report is in board docs, but just briefly, we approved the minutes from the October 10th meeting. We went through the expenditure report as we always do, and the committee gets very involved and openly and transparently discusses any things that are off kilter a little bit. Red Clay is able to meet its budgeted expenditures and it is very has been very fiscally responsible. As of the end of October, we're about 33% of the way through the school year. Revenue is at 88% with expenditures at 31%. So we are in a good place. And we discussed each and every expenditure that was above that and any revenues that were lagging. Um, uh, the, Dr. Ammon gave a thorough presentation on the referendum. I think it's it's in board docs. It's really worth looking at both the current expense or the operating referendum and the capital referendum. The committee fully endorsed and supported both. And Mr. Sh uh, Nate Schwartz, who is the chair of the CFRC, sent us a letter supporting it as well. Um, Red Clay's done a remarkable job with carefully managing its funds, resulting in going nine years before the needs for a current expense or operating referendum and 12 years before the need for a capital referendum. Our next meeting is December 12th at 6 p.m. in a hybrid mode, both in district office and on Zoom. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the Delaware School Board Association. Do we have a report for the SBA? So I'm going to defer to Mr. Wilson. Uh, I had a family emergency on okay. the evening of the report or of the board di directors meeting. And in board docs, there was a report from the meeting. Uh, Mr. Tall, uh, we had a great meeting because the biggest thing in the whole state with the superintendents and the directors were getting that CN pass. And from that, and the very next day from Dover, it, it was passed. And all we have to do now is move forward. That was the big piece in, uh, out of the meeting. And if there's any other questions, uh, you can ask me, but, you know, uh, the mental health part, the thing about um, the SATs and how we're trying to not just look at the SAT for help getting the children into college. So as I can say, filling in at the director meeting, it was a treat and it was good meeting up with different people from all over the state and looking forward to uh, working just to make Delaware better. And also they are definitely working on this uh, the web page, and that's the biggest piece. Thank you. Uh, for facilities, the facilities committee did not have a meeting. The next meeting uh, will be December 11th at 6 p.m. in the district office boardroom. Um, I will provide the Red Clay Education Foundation committee report. The full report is in board docs. Major highlights there um, was a briefing for the referendum and community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a, a general highlight, the full report again is in There we go. There we go. It's like on and off. There we go. Um, more information in board docs. Uh, the, one of the biggest highlights of, of the meeting is the uh, Shining Star Gala that we will be bringing back to Red Clay. Um, just an opportunity to be able to really highlight the achievements of Red Clay um, and gather and uh, so there's more information on the save the date there. Um, so more information for the Shining Stars Gala. Do we have a report for Student and Family Handbook Committee? I don't no, no meeting. We didn't have a no, meeting. No, no, we no, didn't no. have a meeting. So Perfect. Bad. Okay. So moving on to the Wilmington Learning Collaborative. Any updates there? Um, no. The next meeting will be November 28th, um, and then at, at the next meeting we'll provide a report for that. And Dr. Burgos will be here on at our December meeting to give the board a formal update in conjunction with the agreement and the MOU. Yeah. And I don't know if we provided the next meeting date for the board policy review committee, but I just want to say that that will be November 29th. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And the next, sorry about that, the next DSBA meeting will be January 3rd, <laughs> thank 2024. You. Thank you so much. And just for, um, the, the public's benefit, we do post uh, the committee calendar in board docs for folks to review. 
And also please uh, remember to check our public notices page for more information there as well. Um, and I believe we also have a vacancy for CFRC. So, we do. so if anybody would like to apply, I think the application deadline is November 11th. Don't and quote me. The application is online. It's online yeah. under and, public. And notice. it's also been posted at schools. Correct. Yes. So um, that brings us to information items. Um, information items are attached for review. Um, any points of discussion there? Can I just have a comment? Just have a comment um, in full transparency. Um, I know we had a comment tonight about the immersion programs, and I just like for the board to have further discussion around the plan. I have some ideas, so I just wanted to share. I know it's database and everything, and I trust the school administration, um, but I, I just like to have more discussion around that at some point. Duly noted. Um, and that brings us to adjournment. So thank you all for coming out tonight. We all hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved, Kathy Thompson. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Is there a second? Second, English one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting Happy adjourned. Holidays. The time is now 8.45 p.m. Thank, thank you, you and have a wonderful evening. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.